All right, welcome back. Now, time for us to actually interact with our Kajad guests inside the house, and that's something where you go actually like to hear. Now, we get a very um, experienced person. You know, we actually get 10 years' experience as a public health um, expert. Even now, the project director of ACES Health Initiative, you know, one that we've being actually a non governmental organization where they actually found in 2007 to support and empower vulnerable people in Africa to lead a healthy and productive life. Apart from that, it actually writes a book uh, with a call, um, The Future of Infected and Affected as regards to HIV and AIDS. Join me, welcome um, Isaiah Owolabi inside the Good Morning Niger Studio. Good to have you, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much. Yes, we know that the traffic don't hit you black and blue before you yeah, take rich air, but, uh, very <laughs> but thank God say you still make up. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, we'd like you to you know, explain to us what's the HC uh, initiative about. What is the HC initiative they all about? Uh, so basically, um, AC Health Initiative works on uh, creating a healthy and productive society um, for vulnerable people. And when I mean vulnerable people, uh, I mean people who would normally not have access to uh, quality uh, services, I mean health services economic empowerment um, service in the society. I know there are a lot of them, uh, but we try as much as possible to work even more with uh, people who are at the lowest level of the pyramid uh, to make sure that they have access to basic amenities such as healthcare and economic empowerment opportunities. And is this, is this um, access to healthcare, is it free for them, the vulnerable people? Uh, basically what we make, uh, what we try to do is to create an opportunity to make it free uh, but it's not just important that it is free, it is also important that it's quality, uh, which is what we are very particular about. So we are always particular about affordable healthcare, accessible healthcare, and quality healthcare in AC Health Initiative. Okay, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, when you say vulnerable people, there are two questions we want to ask. First of all, uh, what are the parameters used to select who is vulnerable and who is not? That's one. And then two, how, you take this, how do, you, how do you, you know, get to pick these vulnerable people? Like, which areas do you go to? Um, so, over the years, experts and researchers, over the years, experts and researchers have um, uh, done what we call vulnerability index. And these index are used to actually examine the extent of vulnerability of anybody in the society. Uh, because of the kind of society that we belong, we might uh, want to say almost everybody in our society um, is vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Depending on the perspective we look at it, yeah, we might be right and we might also be wrong. So using this vulnerability index, so for example, you consider issues related to um, orphans, and vo uh, orphans. Uh, you consider issues of um, out-of-school children. Uh, you, when you're even looking at out-of-school children, you consider why they're out of school. Some have, have dropped out because of poverty. Some have dropped out because of their parents' sickness. Some have dropped out uh, because of a different issue, pregnancy, and so many other issues. So the context is different if you really want to examine it or you want to look at it. And some actually drop out uh, because of serious cons uh, health consequences or health burden, such as HIV AIDS to their parent. So it's, a, 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 it's, a context, it's contextual, but there are also index to use to measure uh, vulnerability across different society. Now let's talk, talk about your mode of operation. Now you, they actually give them access to quality health care according to you. Now how do you do that? Is it that you work on the established health facilities that we get or you erect a new one? Or how do you actually give them access to quality health? So basically uh, I need to first of all say that uh, we try to focus on uh, issues of health that are of huge economic significance. That is health issues that has the highest economic burden. And I'm going to explain that. So for example, we focus on malaria, sexual and reproductive health issues such as uh, HIV AIDS and maternal health issues. And why do we focus on that? Uh, every year, malaria probably claims over uh, 1 billion US dollars from the Nigerian economy, from productivity at work, number of children that miss school has, and number of parents that cannot even take care of their children and the number of cost of families on medicines and everything like that. So malaria takes a huge chunk. HIV also plays a huge role. Then maternal mortality, which Nigeria is one of the highest in the world. Pregnant women dying during pregnancy or losing children uh, before the age of five. It's a big issue. So we try as much as possible to focus on this key issue. And then, like I said, sexual and reproductive health issues among young people, adolescents and young people today, issues related to sexual and reproductive health can determine if they will live to their full potential. And that's why we uh, try as much as possible, first of all, to focus on this issue. Then we partner with existing health facility 
want to build their capacity. And in some cases, we supply them with health commodities that would help them to uh, support their client or patient to live to their full potential. So for example, uh, we have supplied betting kits to hospitals and we have trained better attendants on improving uh, processes in which they use to deliver children. Uh, we have supplied uh, long-lasting insecticide treated net. Do you supply other things free to the health? Absolutely um, free. And so they are expected to give the patients free? Absolutely. So who follows up? Because in some cases, we don't yet say you give them free to give to patients free, but they are selling it to this patient. Do you do follow up? Absolutely. So we have a monitoring and evaluation framework. Uh, so we do not do it. I would not say we do not engage in direct charity. What do I mean? We don't do a weekend program where we call people together and say we're distributing mosquito net and then you can go and that's there. No, we try as much as possible to make sure that we are incorporating the community frameworks, the structures. And we have a monitoring and evaluation framework that ensures that one, the community members know that this thing is supposed to be given to them free. So there's a sort of accountability when they get to the health centers, when they're asking for it and someone is asking them for money. They're like, we were reliably informed that this would be free. We also work with community influencers, people you call community leaders. They could be traditional leaders, women leaders, youth association, yeah. artisans, to make sure that they're passing this information to the groups within the community. And then they are also helping to improve health seeking behavior within the community. So that community members know that it's also important to seek quality health care when they need it and avoid self-medication. Sounds all. like a very mm -hmm. structured, uh, very, 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 very structured yeah. initiative. Like I said, I don't think the thing where we're before you even carry on come out. But I also want to ask now, with, with everything that you've said, you know, like I said, it sounds very structured. Where, where's the funding come from, coming from? So we have uh, started over 10 years ago, specifically October 2007. So this October will be 11 years. Mm. And uh, we work with private sector organizations uh, in and out of uh, Nigeria. We also work with um, international donor agencies. And then uh, AC Health Initiative also runs a social enterprise that helps to keep uh, the work of the organization sustainable across different parts of Nigeria. Very nice one. Now, apart from the fact, say, you and a person where they try to see how vulnerable people can get access to healthcare, you don't actually chocolate lots of awards. Now, the recent one in 2015, when you received the Young Leaders Award presented by the Queen Elizabeth II at the Buckingham Palace. And you would also write a book where you title HIV and AIDS, The Future of Infected and Affected. Tell us more about book. Which actually, about those books, sorry. What in the book do you actually talk about? Um, so basically, uh, the book HIV AIDS, The Future of the Infected and Affected, uh, talks about everybody. That is, uh, you might not be infected with HIV AIDS, but you are affected directly or indirectly. If you look at what the economic burden looks like, HIV AIDS affects every aspect of our economy. And uh, it's a disease that affects different generations, and it also affects different sectors. So you cannot say, because I'm not infected, I'm not affected. Directly or indirectly, you're affected. And there's something you can do about it, either through education, which is highlighted in the book, either through counseling, or even supporting an HIV program. It might be a health initiative. It might be just any organization that is working towards ending HIV in Nigeria. Support. And it could be through volunteering, too. A lot of people come to us and they volunteer during our programs. Even it doesn't have to be us. You can just decide to volunteer for an HIV hate uh, organization. So the steps to actually... Uh, understanding how it affects you is written in the book, and the f steps actually uh, also support and providing support, not even in cash, but even in uh, kind is also written in the book. And then I close the book by saying that I look forward to the day where in the newspaper we'll have, uh, okay. we have an HIV AIDS free world. So basically that's what uh, the book says. Very nice, and we will actually um, hope to read um, this particular one. Now, if a community, they actually watch us this morning, and they know, say, for that community, we don't have access to quality health care, can they reach you? Absolutely. They can send us an email at um, info at hseui.org, and definitely we we'll, would uh, take up things to... Can we say that again? Info, I-N-F-O, at hseui.org. H-A-C-E-Y. Dot O-R-G. So they can uh, send us an email... And from there, we'll take it up, speak to people. And uh, over the last couple of years, we've installed about over 30 boreholes mm -hmm. in different communities in Lagos and Lagos State. And we're installing six, 17 currently. Okay. What, what is your reach, like your outreach? How, uh, is it just in the southwest region? Is it just in Lagos State? Or is it across the country? So we have programs in different parts of Nigeria, depending on the key issues uh, that's happening there. So for example, in the northern part of Nigeria, 
We have programs related to female genital mutilation. Uh, we have programs related, uh, related to uh, maternal, reducing maternal mortality and supporting women, uh, building the capacity of um, health workers. And in Southwest Nigeria, we have program um, across over 273 health centers where we are supporting them to provide quality uh, sexual and reproductive health for young people. This is really amazing. And you guys have been in existence since 2007. So not forget, say, if your community needs um, quality health care and are not getting them, just send them a message, info at AC, as IC, right? AC, AC, AC. sorry. H-A-C-E-Y dot com. Dot org. Dot org. O -R -G. Info at H-A-C-E-Y dot O-R-G. Just send them a message and they will surely, surely uh, reply. Thank you so much, Isaiah Wola, the co-founder of AC you. Initiative. Thank Good you. to have you in the house. Okay. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.